Home security. This is a very loaded topic, and I mean every aspect, because there's so many different variables. And that's why I really can't just sit here and say, if you do this, this, and this, you're going to be safe. Uh, there's just no such thing as that. I mean, there's some things that can increase your chances of being more secure and to protecting your, your life and liberty and your families. But uh, there's no uh, quick fix. It's not like you can go out to Home Depot and buy a piece of equipment and it's going to solve all your problems. So what I have set up here instead, though, instead of trying to find one or two solutions, I'm just doing an outline on the topic. And if you want to investigate any of these in particular, feel free to do such. And or if you want to comment in the comment section, uh, maybe I could throw a few ideas your way. So the first thing is your location of where you live. Uh, this is massive. You know, if you live in a very uh, rundown part of town and there's a lot of crime and poverty, uh, unfortunately, they go hand in hand. Uh, you're going to have some some issues, possibly. Um, you're going to have to be a little bit more aware of your surroundings and um, what's going on than probably someone that lives in a in a nicer neighborhood. And that's not to say that nice people in nice neighborhoods don't get uh, get robbed or hurt or killed. Uh, they do. But the occurrence rate is a lot lower. You can just look at the stats yourself. Any large city is going to have problems a lot more in one part of the city than another. And that's because there's a certain type of people in one part of the city than the other. So that leads us into the social economic status of the area and your neighbors. You should definitely get to know your neighbors, especially your immediate neighbors, because they're going to be probably the ones you would go for, for help uh, or go to for help um, in an emergency. And so you'd also want to uh, to be somewhat friendly, you know, to those on your street, even though you may not get along with everyone. Um, but to be I definitely want to be aware of when you're buying a home, though, of how the uh, social economic status is in your area. What about the type of home? You know, if you buy a trailer that has pencil thin uh, walls and doors that are flimsy, um, it's going to be a lot easier to break in and a lot harder to keep bad people out than someone who has, uh, you know, a stone house or a concrete home or uh, a nice thick brick home with steel doors. So there's something to consider, you know, the type of home that you have. Now, the amount of land is also something that, you know, really is a big factor because you have more distance sometimes from other, you know, homes. And so if you're way off the road, people from the road may not even know that there's a house back there. So that could shield you. But it also could be the inverse that if you're getting robbed, it could actually act as a, a shield, you know, trees and so forth to keep neighbors from seeing that you need help. So it's a double-edged sword. But overall, I believe that the more land you have, the better, uh, so that it gives you more options uh, to retreat and or to uh, to build defensive positioning. It include, you know, also things like fencing and so forth, you know, have dogs and other animals running around. Uh, what about uh, the local law enforcement? What is their track record? Are they pretty good at responding when you call for help or not? What about drug activity? You know, once again, let's look at the crime stats of your area before you move there. Uh, trash. Uh, trash pickups are a real big deal because if you don't put your trash and conceal it in a, at least in a, you know, a common sense fashion, people know what you have or what you just bought to some degree. So always put your stuff into trash bags. And if there are larger boxes you can't fit into a trash bag, cut them down, you know, or heck, even burn them. If, you, if it's legal in your area, just burn them in the backyard in a fire pit. What about your outer perimeters? This is something to consider. Uh, so like your boundary lines, you know, what's out there? Is there uh, natural barriers? Do you have like a lot of trees, uh, boulders? Is there like a body of water? Is there like a pond or a lake that uh, is a natural barrier? Uh, or do you have man-made barriers? You know, is it like fencing or the backs of buildings that makes it hard for anybody to uh, to get over? And so fencing and gates is going to be a big aspect if you can afford it and if it's practical for you. It just keeps the people at bay so they don't come right up to your front door uh, without any resistance. Of course, fencing and gates have limitations. Uh, most of them can be jumped or with a, just a simple wire cutter or a chain type of cutter uh, can be uh, overcome. Uh, but it at least gives you uh, a little more time to react and or more resistance, and it may uh, deter certain types of criminals. Cameras. 
uh, definitely to record. You want to have uh, the means to record all that uh, outside cameras and maybe even a few inside cameras lighting. Uh, not only just to have the emergency lighting inside, but uh, lighting outside. I mean, definitely. I mean, some really good quality floodlights. And uh, they have LED floodlights now that are really inexpensive and very bright. Um, that in combination with motion sensors that are attached to maybe the alarm system inside your home and maybe have a dog or two. They don't even have to be that big. I'd say a medium to large size dog is, is fine. You don't need these extra large, uh, you know, attack dogs. But, you know, one or two uh, just to kind of give you a heads up would be good. Uh, dogs that actually bark. Um, for your vehicle, do you keep it in a, in a garage? You know, uh, that would be good. Sometimes keeping things out of sight, out of mind. What about defensive landscaping? Do you have thorn bushes in, in strategic places so people can't just crawl into a window very easily? Uh, things like that are, have to be considered. Um, so the materials that the home is built from, now that we're getting into the home, you know, is is it really like, is it reinforced? You know, are your doors reinforced? Are your windows reinforced? Do you have window bars possibly? If you don't want that, do you have some type of protective screen, you know, or film on your windows? Is your windows double pane, triple pane? Are they made of impact resistant glass, uh, plexiglass? They have all kind of, you know, different materials now. Uh, doors and entranceways. Uh, what about your locks, your door types, uh, security doors, peepholes, uh, door bars? Um, these all these things really matter. Now, the equipment that you store in your garage or your shed or your barn, is it actually in there? You know, because a lot of people, they leave it out in the yard, like their lawnmower or other maybe more higher end, you know, pieces of equipment. So just go ahead and store them after you're done. At the end of the day, put them where they need to go so they're more secure and lock them up. Security systems in the home, uh, it's a big thing. Uh, most people don't even use them, though, but they have them. So if you have them, use them. Um, emergency lighting uh, equipment in the home, definitely so. And it doesn't have to be like mounted on the wall, but maybe a few strategically you know, placed lanterns would, would work of the LED type. The next would be uh, to have a safe room, uh, a reinforced maybe closet or bedroom. Uh, definitely a lot of information on the web about this. And basically just have a, a room that you can go to that has provisions that you can call for help and or uh, have a position that's defendable. A means to call for help, even besides maybe like a phone uh, that has a, a landline. Uh, it would have to be maybe like a cell phone or a backup cell phone or other other options. Um, and a means to protect yourself. And this goes into uh, non-lethal and lethal options. Uh, the non-lethal, and these, these are just examples. This is by no means uh, an exhaustive list. I have more exhaustive lists on my channel if you want to search for those. But non-lethal would be like pepper spray, pepper gel, tasers, batons, things like that. Lethal would be blades, even though I wouldn't want to get that close to someone to use a blade. So probably a firearm of your choice. Uh, first aid and trauma kits would have to be a, a big must, and they can be stored throughout the home and definitely in your safe room. Um, you know, different types of lighting, especially tactical lighting, uh, very powerful lights. I think 400 lumens and above is pretty much a good starter uh, light for most people because light can be used to, uh, to keep people back and to disorient. But mostly, though, for me, it would be to identify threats. And the next thing for me, though, is something that really is core. After you make plans on how to deal with situations and you have the material assets, the family or the household needs to practice uh, using these things. And so they need to have like just like you would have a fire drill, uh, you would have like a home invasion drill and you practice this probably at least once a month just to keep it sharp. And you would have certain keywords. And when you say certain words, well, the parents, would, when the parents or the adults say certain keywords, uh, the children would know what to do, where to go, uh, to shelter in place, go to the safe room, call for help, go get a neighbor, whatever it is your plan. Okay, so um, if you have anything to add to this, uh, definitely let me know. I know there's a lot of different uh, theories and ideas about how to get neighbors involved with these uh, types of, um, of scenarios, if not um, uh, systems for protection. Um, and there's a lot of different uh, uh, techniques and skills that you can learn, uh, such as martial arts and those things as well. 
Uh, so it's a, it's a very uh, a deep subject. It's a very in-depth uh, thing to cover, but hopefully this helps you get you started. Thanks for watching.